Yes, um, I tried reading some something about Anthony Giddens understanding of agency because I know he's one of the big theoreticians about it and uh, um, and I also read other stuff and I have the feeling agency maybe uh, could be seen also as some capacity of individuals to act independently and make free choices including in conditions of strong political and hegemonic structures and do change in spite of this structures uh, so it's somehow related to your idea of autonomy which you discussed previously uh, and it could be a property of people but also of organizations uh, so um, uh, I I want now to uh, take out uh, a little bit take uh, take back a little bit our look from our individual countries and look a little bit more in general to our region and to compare it to Western Europe or the USA. Um, because different social contexts, different political and cult- any culture, in fact, different culture, uh, maybe hints at different properties of the people who have or organizations who have agency. And uh, uh, I have the feeling uh, many theories about agency deal with some kind of clean environment where uh, people uh, just act or just are uh, but I'm aware in our region of a fallen nature so you know I have the feeling often in our region maybe somebody has some uh, level of agency but there is also some kind of fallen nature and uh, of his person or his uh, organizations uh, it's not pure essence, it is somehow something which is still to be emancipated maybe. And uh, I want to ask in this sense, um, uh, what could be the specifics of agency in general in Southeastern Europe? Uh, and um, uh, how exactly this population of ours, which generally is not very much involved in political or social action, uh, there is always this understanding that people are generally apathetic and withdrawn from uh, life. Um, how could a um, greater level of agency be encouraged and promoted in our region? Well, um, I think it does relate to the autonomy discussion that we had at the beginning. Um, and again, um, in a collective uh, collectivist society, from uh, Hofstede's understanding of uh, relying on the collective, the, the tribe, the group, whatever, um, you can you can look at agency for instance at china um think about the reform that china had to go through when computers uh first appeared and computers are very good at typing with a qwerty keyboard but that is not very useful when you have 10,000 ideograms uh, to write in Chinese. So, uh, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago, China was even considering the idea of ditching the Chinese alphabet uh, just to make sure that they can use computers. But the uh, collectivist um, agency of a country like China translates in the ability to formulate an objective and pulling resources because everybody believes that the collective makes better decisions. In our neck of the woods in Western Europe where we want to be agency is more related to the individual 
to the autonomy that an individual can uh, muster when they uh, see something that they think is wrong and they set on changing the rules in such a way that injustice uh, is done away with. Um, because our societies, Romania, Bulgaria, um, other people in the Balkans, um, even, even Hungary to some extent, that, um, are a bit more collective than we would like. Um, we see that um, I believe in an objective set by my group, you believe in another objective set by your group, and because of group allegiance, collectivism, uh, the two objectives uh, come into conflict. Now, this is a problem because uh, we do not educate individuals in terms of autonomy so that they can go and bring in allies one by one. But we think that a sort of a battle must entail between my group and your group and whoever wins will get the cake and eat it too. So um, when we relate agency to the way our societies function today, we understand two things. Number one, as long as we keep being collectivist, we will not be able to muster the agency, the autonomous individual agency that we admire in Western Europe. And if we don't educate individuals to become autonomous, they will not be able to muster the agency that we admire in Western Europe. And apparently, we have made this decision that we don't want to be like China, but we do want to be like Western Europe. So we only have one choice, and that one choice is to make sure that in our societies, we educate individuals toward autonomy, and that we sever the ties that keep these groups, collectives, tribes together. Um, but we are not moving at the right pace in this direction, and it's going to take a lot more time than um, we would like. Unless this is a uh, um, unless this is a very conscientious effort because otherwise we can we can uh, forget about it and allow time to fix it and then if you allow time to fix it it, it will get fixed but maybe in a hundred years and we want it fixed in maybe in 10 years so this is the choice that we have okay um you mentioned well that uh, and, and, yes and and vladimir you can I'm, I'm sorry just one second you can you can see um this new trend about agency related to autonomy in our region you can see it if you look at a number of social movements uh with minorities um the type of feminism that we have in the Balkans is very different from the feminism that we had, I don't know, 50 years ago in the UK and the United States. Because in the UK and the United States 50 years ago, feminism 
was related to a collective agency of all women and relied on bringing in some allies from amongst the men. But in, in uh, Romania, Bulgaria, Moldova, I'm sure if you look at it in Macedonia or in Albania, possibly even in Greece or Turkey, you will see that feminism is predicated on the autonomous agency of a woman who wants to be seen as equal and respected as a human being, not in comparison to a man, but in comparison to any other human being. And I think this is a very important shift um, in the way that we think about um, agency and autonomy in, in the Balkans. You all also see that happening um, with the sexual minorities of uh, uh, gay, lesbian, bisexual, and so on. I think you also see it um, with the Roma minority. I don't know in Bulgaria, uh, but I do know about it in Romania, and that's for sure how it goes. Um, so it may be the case that we will see this model being replicated in more um, walks of life, in more areas of human interaction, because it, it sort of proves uh, successful in a way. Okay, um, you mentioned the feminist agency, and uh, I am sure that uh, maybe some people could discuss about Orthodox or Protestant agency. <laughs> I mean, these groups, religious groups, they also want to change something in society. They also promote some mm -hmm. values, etc. And I, and now we may reach, or maybe already have reached, a situation in which uh, it's full of change agents around. But the change of one uh, group of them maybe is against the change of the other and neutralizes the change of the others. And I think that makes, uh, once again, important the issue of the center or of the balancer type of person, uh, some kind of a person or organization or structure which plays the role of equilibrium. Uh, because we may well imagine that... Um, uh every agency or every group has its righteousness or justice uh valid within certain limits uh and it becomes also important what are the limits so um yeah but but, 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 I, but I think the bridge is a better metaphor than uh the balance the equilibrium because the bridge brings allies together and also maintains the balance. A bridge that doesn't maintain the balance will collapse. Mm -hmm. But the bridge not only maintains the balance, it also brings allies together. And again, agency means that you have a clear objective, you have the resources and the allies and the capacity to bring them together and channel their efforts in order to achieve the objective. So um, I think what we need is not necessarily a center that keeps the balance, but a center that bridges alliances between um, changes or objectives that are compatible. Now, it may be the case that some of the objectives that are not compatible will remain on the fringes and they will probably continue to contribute to polarization. Uh, but I would very much like to focus on those objectives that relate to um, the the bridge in the center, the one that brings everybody together, um, 
and that is mostly going to to uh, relate to some of the core values of um, um, togetherness and um, uh, equality or equity, if you want, um, respect for uh, human dignity. Um, and this is not ideological to the left or to the right. Uh, this is um, simply human nature. Okay. Um, I can't help also asking you about journalism and change. Um, because it, it journalism is something like the thing that stands in between all the uh, justices, all the uh, rightfulnesses. Uh, all the change agents uh, it's some kind of a middle ground uh, um, media is the middle ground uh, but it is also a deeply discredited profession in Bulgaria uh, and it is reduced to a large extent to being propaganda outlet for the political and economic powers in society so in fact journalists at least in Bulgaria in my view very rarely have their own agency <laughs> Most of the time we are encouraged to just translate or don't mess with strong interests. Uh, it requires, as you said, a lot of qualities are necessary for being uh, agent or having agency, but also a lot of uh, qualities, maybe even more, are required if you want to be a journalist who uh, does something like change in, through his work. And also journalism or the press often becomes something like a stick. So when uh, various economic groups or political parties want to battle, they battle through journalists. They use journalists as weapon. Uh, so uh, in this sense, um, what is the potential of journalism to bring change in our region when it has such a fallen nature <laughs> in general? But it Vladimir, I think we need to <clears throat> differentiate two very important aspects related to journalism. Uh, one is how journalism in general reflects the news. And this is a place where journalism uh cannot have agency a place where journalism cannot attempt to change anything if journalism simply reflects the news then the journalist doesn't need to have an agenda other than the public interest the other side of the coin is when you look at journalism as the group of people that are doing this job. Within this guild, so to say, journalists should have agency and should have specific objectives for change in the sense that um, a journalist that agrees to become um, the stick of a politician or the propaganda outlet of a political party or, or the face of a specific oligarchic interest uh, or the uh, ally uh, of a um, foreign agent. These should no longer be journalists. So it, it, it befalls on the guild of journalists to make a change in terms of professional ethics to make sure that they ostracize the people who present themselves 
uh, as journalists, but they're doing another job. Um, now, from this second perspective, uh, I do see that uh, journalists uh, have a lot of problems. The media, the press has a lot of problems, especially trust issues. Uh, not only in Bulgaria, but very heavily in Romania and in Moldova as well. Um, do I also see a movement of the professional uh, guild of journalists to get rid of the rotten apples? Um, not very strong. So. Um, I believe there is a role for agency and for change, but not with respect to society and how we do the news, but with respect to how we do the job, with respect to professional ethics. Does it does it make sense to you? Very much, yes, for sure. Um, we we had already quite a long talk, and I want to mm -hmm. make some kind of official ending. Um, even though I may have something to say after that ending, but I want to, to ask you as a kind of final words or preliminary final, final words, if I may say. Um, we have discussed about Southeastern Europe and uh, we uh, touched very a lot of issues. We touched polarization. We touch uh, agency in this region, uh, a lot of actors, a lot of interests. And at the end of the day, uh, what is the future of our region? I would ask you to present a positive and a negative scenario or version <laughs> of what could happen in the next few years in our region. Um, I think there is, a, there is a very interesting theory that um, um, you can, um, you know, uh, divide et impera, uh, the Latin uh, divide and conquer. Uh, it goes like this, if you, if you can fragment a society, then um, little by little isolate the fragments what will happen is that they uh, get out of sync, they desynchronize. And when uh, a society is uh, fragmented, the fragments are isolated, and then the isolated fragments are desynchronized, you get a mass of people that you can very easily manipulate, therefore conquer. Um, what happens in the region, uh, at least since accession to the European Union, 2004-2007, is that some uh, elements of society are more increasingly synchronized with the West. Whereas other elements of society are uh, fragmented, isolated, and desynchronized. So um, the, the good scenario, the, the optimistic view of what the future brings is that the synchronized elements of our societies start building bridges in such a way that their synchronicity starts to spill over and provide development for everybody else. Um, the bad scenario, the negative, the, the pessimistic uh, view is that the polarization among the isolated and desynchronized fragments gets so strong 
that we see a sort of a dissolution of the state and um, uh, division in, in smaller political entities uh, that cannot talk to each other. So burning the bridges. Um, I am an optimist myself. I, I can be I can be very dark when I describe uh, specific uh, political uh, phenomena, but I am an optimist myself, and I I strongly believe that uh, we are headed in the direction of more and more synchronicity. Uh, the the bridges over the Danube are a very good. Uh, uh, or over the Prut River are, are very good uh, metaphors for that. Um, uh, but I do believe that we are increasingly becoming more European, um, so-called Western, uh, quote unquote, and 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 that means that there is a brighter future not only for us too, when we're going to retire in about 20 years or so, uh, but more specifically for the kids that will be born next year in Romania, Bulgaria, and Moldova. When these kids will get of age at about 40 or 50, like we are today, Life is going to be a lot more, a lot better for them than it is for us today. Okay, I'm happy we end on a very positive note. Um, I, <laughs> I do believe uh, our talk and especially your perspectives uh, expanded the frames in which we think about all these issues. Um, and I really hope that um, our readers somehow get good insights and ideas and maybe get some hope as well. And uh, uh, I believe we will continue <laughs> with such type of podcasts uh, when uh, we feel there is need for that. Uh, so thank you.